morning is the second in the series of uh, Advent, which is looking at this week uh, faith. The second Sunday of Advent is the faith. Sunday. And so we are looking this morning at uh, two passages. The first passage is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to, uh, 1 to 8. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Of course, obviously, this is the beginning of Mark's account of the gospel. And he tells us this right away. He says in Mark chapter 1, the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preparing a, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Well, there, there are three aspects of faith that we will need to talk about this morning. And the first one of them is here where we look at this, this passage and we see that there is a tremendous need for faith. John the Baptist and Mark don't particularly say this out loud in this particular passage, but the implication is there and is very strong. You see, John the Baptist comes and, and his proof for what he is saying is basically nothing. Until Jesus comes one day, we read a little bit later, and, and, and John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the baptism happens and so on. But other than that, he's got no proof. And, and the reality is that just pointing out some dude on the side of the shore or on the shore of the Jordan River is not really proof either. Right? John is not one, as far as we can tell, goes around performing all kinds of great and tremendous miracles. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't do a whole lot of arguing with people. In fact, he doesn't seem to have a whole lot of patience for arguing at all. You know, he, he's the kind of fellow who said, who warned you about the wrath to come? you brood of vipers, right? He doesn't want to spend time arguing with you. He's just going to tell you what he believes the truth to be. And if you believe it, great. And if you don't, well, tough toodles, I guess, right? And so his whole thing is based on faith. That's what we call it when we don't have truth, or we don't have proof, excuse me, and yet we believe something. It is faith. And this is true about the Bible and the gospel in totality. For hundreds of years, people have practiced uh, the the art of apologetics. And, and it's, it's good. There's a lot of helpful and useful stuff that comes out of apologetics. But apologetics is contrary to what it sounds like. It's not about apologizing and saying, oops, sorry. <laughs> that would be a very Canadian sort of thing. Right? Sorry, I'm, I'm an apologist. 
sorry. <laughs> no, apologetics is sort of the, the study and science of having logical arguments to back up your faith, your story, your belief, right? So an apologeticist knows all the reasons for why Christianity is uh, reasonable, right? Uh, you see it in, in books like The Case for Christ um, and The Case for Christianity. Uh, C.S. Lewis um, has the book Mere Christianity, which is in a lot of senses an apologetic work. It argues the reasonableness of the faith, right? And those are all good books, a and there's lots of good resources but ultimately, belief in Jesus comes down to faith, right? God does not prove himself to us beyond a shadow of a doubt. No doubt he could, but he generally does not do that. He doesn't send angelic messengers to you very often. I have not had, that I'm aware of, an angelic messenger come and speak to me. Have any of you? It would be really cool. I would love to hear that story because God does do that, just not very often. God wants us to believe him. When he says things, when God says to Moses, I am who I am, right? Moses starts fishing for proofs. He's looking for all kinds of proofs. And God seemingly reluctantly gives him some proofs. But it's interesting that later on when Moses is, you know, trying to argue with Pharaoh that his magicians are often able to come up with proofs that are, are pretty similar. Now, of course, God wins out. But the whole proof thing is kind of tenuous at best anyways. It's not about proof. It's about Faith. And faith, faith is critical. We need to believe in God. And we need to believe in what he says. And we need to believe in his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we need to believe that we need to repent of our sins. And if we don't believe any of those things, and we don't believe that God provides salvation, then there's really not a whole lot that can be done for us. The Holy Spirit, thankfully, works in people's lives to soften up their hearts so that those initial barriers of unbelief, the unbelief that we are sinful people, the unbelief in God, the unbelief in God's message, those things can be dissolved away so that people can come to faith. But in order to talk about the other two parts of faith that we need to look at this morning, we need to turn to our second passage, which is from 2 Peter, 1 Peter. Yes, Second Peter. Uh, I think I told you wrong, because it's supposed to be Second Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Pull out your Bibles. Yeah, that's a good thing. Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter three, verses eight to fifteen a. I'm sorry, I wrote it down wrong for you, David. In it we read these words, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. 
The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. The word of the Lord. Amen. You see, the second two parts of faith that are really important here is that, first of all, there is a purpose for our faith. We have faith in God's promises that God will return and that he will create a new heaven and a new earth. Absolutely. But there is a reason why we have to wait so long. Why we have to wait so long. Why our faith seems to be tested by so far a little bit more than 2,000 years of waiting. Not to mention the however many thousands of years of waiting before Jesus came to earth. Right? That's a lot of patience for people. Right? I get impatient when my website doesn't load after 10 seconds. Right? Waiting for 6,000 years, that's quite something. But there's a reason for it. Why? Why do we have to wait so long? Serious. Why? For his, his kingdom to be fulfilled. Yes. Right. And could God come? Could Jesus come right now? Yeah, sure he could. Absolutely. But, but he is patient with you, verse 9, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Right? God is patient with us. And so our faith in waiting a little longer and a little longer and a little longer and what feels like a lot longer is for our good, right? So that not one of his chosen would perish, right? God could come today, absolutely, and maybe he will. I don't really know. But that being said, I do know that he is waiting until the fullness of time, until all of his sheep have been gathered into his sheepfold. And that is good, right? That is good. And so our faith means that we not only need to believe without having proof, right, that that's important, but also it means that we need to wait, we need to wait with faith because we believe the promises of God because we know that the, the waiting is good for and of course, not just us here in this room or us listening online, but us as in the whole human race. Faith 
is important because waiting in faith means that we give <laughs> we give God and ourselves the time so that none will perish. Mm. I'm not articulating this as well as I did when I was talking with Gwyneth about it earlier this week. <laughs> but there's a third thing that's really important about our faith too. And that is not only the patience to wait, just as God waits and we are, are, are brought into his sheepfold, but also the reality that we need to do something about our faith. Right? We believe without proof and we, and we wait with patience just as God waits with patience for all of the people to come into his sheepfold. But thirdly, we do things something with our faith. And this is absolutely critical. Listen to this. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. Speed its coming. This is weird. Is, is Peter saying here that you and I have some power over when Jesus will return? Well, yeah, he kind of is. He is saying that as we work to bring about the kingdom of God in this place as we work to share the gospel message with those around us, both with the words that we say and the deeds that we do, as we bring, about, bring people into the sheepfold, that we are, we are spreading that good news, right? God is waiting for what? He's waiting for all the people to be brought into his sheepfold, right? And if we're working... To bring people into the sheepfold, that's good. We're helping to bring all those people in. And so we're helping to prepare, just like John the Baptist did, the way of the Lord. This is critical. And, and it's so hard. Because we have a history, and, and I know when I say this out of great love, we as a denomination, because I grew up in the same denomination, and it's not just our denomination, lots of denominations have the same thing, but we have a history of, of a particular sort of error where we think that somehow it's okay to just keep my relationship with God a personal, private thing. That it's just between me and God and I don't really talk about it with anyone else. Or maybe I talk about it with my family or other Christ followers, but I don't go out and bother people with it from across the road or at the grocery store or wherever I go. I don't say those things. Instead, in our denomination, we have a tendency to encourage people to, to speak with their actions, to do good things, which is wonderful. It's great, right? We have all kinds of stuff that we do to help out our neighbors in very practical ways, and we kind of hope that they get it. But it's not enough. Gwyneth showed me a, a really interesting video um, just yesterday, actually, where a, a fellow did a sort of scientific study. He had wallets, identical wallets, dropped in various locations throughout North America. He dropped, I don't know, like a hundred wallets or something like this, more than whatever. He dropped a lot of wallets in lots of different places, had volunteers drop them, even had them set up like little, little cameras to see what would happen to those wallets, right? And, and it turns out that 
that first of all, people throughout North America are actually pretty honest, right? They're actually pretty honest. But it also turns out that, that your age didn't matter, your gender didn't matter, and your religion didn't matter, whether you had one or not. Everybody pretty much equally, even economically, that didn't matter either. None of those things mattered. They all returned the wallets in equal proportions, regardless of any of those things. So see, your good deeds, my good deeds, won't cut it alone. They won't be good enough to give the message because you know what? There's a lot of other people of other faiths or of no faith at all who also do nice things, who also do good things. And so we as a denomination and we as individuals need to get our heads out of the sand and realize that it needs to be deeds and words. In other denominations, sometimes they struggle with the idea that they do only words that they talk lots about the gospel, but then they don't follow it up or, or, or pair it with deeds that, you know, I, I had a friend in seminary, we went to, I don't know, a store or something, and, and, and the guy out of the blue started sharing the gospel with the, with the, the clerk at the store, and, and, and it was just, it felt hostile, like it was aggressive business sales techniques. And I was sitting there, man, if I was that dude, I'd be swearing a blue streak and telling that guy to get out of here because it was, it was not nice. But he was trying to share the gospel with words without the deeds, really. And that doesn't work either. So this is our faith. Our faith where we, 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 we believe without necessarily the facts because the proof is not really ultimately there. It really comes down to faith. And then we, 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 we wait patiently with God no matter how many thousands of years it takes. And then we work with words and deeds to share our faith with others, to speed the coming of God. This is our faith, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for the faith you have given us through Jesus, through your Holy Spirit working in us. Thank you so much that you have sustained faithful people through thousands of years. Sometimes, oh God, we know it seems like there are very few who are faithful to you. But always there are some. Thank you, oh God, that you have been patient with us. And that you do not want any to perish, but everyone to come to repentance, to come to you. Father, help us. Help us together with your Spirit to bring about and speed your coming again through our words and our deeds that our faith may have action, that we may bring in through the power of your Spirit people into your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our song of response this morning is, what's our song of response? All right, yes, that was very good of us, wasn't it? Build your kingdom here. Let us uh, stand together and worship.